Today we're making this super slick stencil title in just a few minutes in Fusion. This is such a pro looking technique and anybody can do this. It's, it's pretty simple. Take a little bit of time, do your best and you can do it. So this is a pretty neat little technique that looks like there's multiple layers of cut out paper here. And what's really neat is at any time I can change this text or I can even switch this out with a logo with just one click and apply that same technique to the logo. Such a flexible way to do things. We're gonna start from scratch here. I'll just right click up here in my media pool and say new fusion composition. I'll call this stencil and hit create and double click on that to open up a blank composition. Close our media pool here. And let's just start with a background and we'll connect this to the media out and let's pick kind of a greenish teal. And this will be just the main color. I'm actually gonna go up to workspace and uncheck show page navigation just to give us a little bit of room. And let's put a little bit of texture on this. I'll go up to the media pool and I have a white construction paper texture here. I'll just drag in. You can use any kind of texture you want. But this nice kind of subtle construction paper is nice. And in this merge one, let's take the apply mode and change that to multiply. That'll just apply this texture to that green background. I'll also add a transform node after our media in and size this down so we have that texture kind of scaled decently and we'll just move this to the side let's rename this paper texture this we'll call this colored bg all right so now let's add some text that we're going to actually use for our cutout i'll just grab this third icon over here this text plus and we'll call this uh cut out like that and we can just merge this over like this let's pick a font that's a little more exciting How about montserrat black there we go maybe push the tracking just a touch size it up and now let's get down to the nitty-gritty what we actually want to do is cut this text out from this paper texture and we can do that so many different ways but i think what we'll do is just run this texture through a map control let's actually just take this merge and get rid of this merge i'll hold shift and put this map control down here between the merge and the media out and we'll take our text and put that into the green input of the map control a map control does like 50 different things but one thing it can do is apply something's alpha channel to something else sort of like applying a mask later down the line all i have to do is select this mat control and go over to combine and let's say combine alpha and post multiply image and now we're essentially using this text as a mask for everything that we run into the mat control but let's actually use everything but the text just by going to invert mat right here and oh look at that look at what she, look at look at this she's ready so that's pretty neat and now what you would think we would do would be to duplicate this a whole bunch of times and offset it in z space oh boy let's not we're just going to use a simple node called duplicate dup i'm just hitting shift space bar to bring up this select tool typing in dup and let's go to that and using duplicate we can do all kinds of stuff by default it adds another copy directly on top of the current copy and it looks like we're doing nothing but if we offset the center, oh, look at what's going on now. It's duplicating it. And so if we were to do something like size this down and then switch this operator from over to under, then we're looking through the original one at the copy in the background. Now, it's a little bit hard to tell because we don't have any kind of drop shadow or anything. So before we go to duplicate, let's add a little shadow, SHAD. We'll just do the regular shadow. And now as I push the softness up, we can see what's going on. We have our duplicate back here and it's being cut out and kind of pushed back. Now that's really cool, but where it really gets crazy is when we pump up these copies. So let's do like 10 copies instead. And now we're getting somewhere. As we adjust the size here, we have this kind of swooshing out into the distance. And we can adjust this shadow depending on how much darkness we want to show, how sharp we want that to be, and all of that. And I think what I'll do is just make a not very soft shadow just around the edges here. We'll just do this kind of perfectly around the edges, almost like a kind of just like an ambient occlusion sort of thing, where it's just dark around the very edges of things. Let's just add another shadow here. And this one, we're going to have it a little bit softer, but we're gonna take the alpha down to like half. And same thing for our shadow one, this. So now we have it really dark here, and then we have it just kind of generally darkening things a little bit with the second shadow. So here's the difference, just darkens things a little bit, but the tight shadow around the edges is the first shadow. So those combine to give us a really nice little effect here, nice. So in duplicate, we can change all of these things around. We can offset the copies and all of that, and that's how we get that main effect going on. But this is all procedural, which is pretty cool so this is kind of happening live to this cutout text and so at any point we can change this text and it updates really fast we don't have to render it or anything like that in fact we can change this and it will change all of the copies too so if we were to do something like add some displacement to our text 
Just bring this up in our left viewer here. And we'll just drive that with a fast noise like this, make it really detailed, scale it down. Now we get kind of these more cut out rough edges with our displacement. We'll scale this down even more like 50. And we'll take this displacement refraction strength to zero. Then we'll just change that a little bit just so we have a little bit of roughness on the edges. So here's without and here's with it, just a little bit of roughness. And that's going to happen not only to our first cutout, but all of the other cutouts behind it. So we're building a cool little rig here and we can just animate it using this duplicate node. By the way, if you're new to Fusion, make sure to check out my nine nodes that you need to make almost anything in Fusion. That's a free workshop, it's available right here and it'll teach you so much stuff. Oh, it's my gift to you. Let's, uh, let's keep going. Then all we have to do is animate it. So maybe at zero, we can, you know, do something like adjust the angle and have this kind of twist like that. So we could do something along those lines, have it end twisted a little bit. We could have the text start at the beginning. I'll just go to layout and keyframe our center here. We can bring this down and it'll kind of work in perspective too, which is kind of neat. As I move this, it automatically moves that perspective around. So we'll just put it there. And then at the end, we'll just push this up a little bit. So now we have this cool animation and we can just play around with it until we like like it. If we want to adjust the timing, we can go to our keyframes panel here. And on these three dots in the upper right hand corner, I have show only selected tools. That's just so we don't see every single thing in the world. We'll just zoom to fit right here. And I can take these keyframes and move them a little bit closer together, which means that this will happen a little faster. There we go. And if I want this to not stop so suddenly, I can select any of these keyframes and hit F on the keyboard to flatten them out. And what that'll do is flatten out this little graph in between the keyframes and it starts slowly and then it ends and it slows down before it ends right? It's a little bit easier to see in the spline panel actually, which is just kind of a bigger graph that lets you adjust these curves a little more. In fact, I can hold alt and drag this to the left to really change how this works. Let's grab this duplicate node. I can grab this size and hold shift and just bring it here to the left again. Hit F on the keyboard to flatten it. Same thing here. There we go. That's cool. And yeah, if I ever think we need maybe a little more darkness there, I can push the alpha up on either of my shadows. Push that up a little bit. Get a little bit more contrast. Yeah, it's looking pretty neat. Now, I don't want to see nothing behind this. Let's actually just use that same texture. And so let's just grab a merge node here and we'll take this texture, put that into the background. So that looks like this. And then we'll just merge what we've made over that background and then put that into media out like this. And here we'll see we have a little bit too much of our shadow. So I'll take that back down. I don't want that to be too crazy. There we go. Yeah. And from there, it's just a matter of playing with this until it's kind of how we like it. And from there, we can add any kind of style that we want. Like if we want to have some bars kind of go across this, we could do something like add a rectangle mask and just invert it. And now we have little bar that we can sweep across this anytime and it duplicates that bar too because this is all being ran through that same series of nodes and it gives you a really cool kind of sweeping effect that's just so easy and it looks like you spent a hundred hours on it and it just you didn't you just didn't let's take this up a little bit and we'll just have this start over here and we'll keyframe that center we'll just have that go across here like that and now we have this kind of moving little bar sweeping across you can open up our keyframes panel to change when that happens and select both of these and hit F to flatten them out if I want to. I think I'll just keep them linear actually. And if I want to add another one, I can hit control C and control V, take this and maybe offset it a little bit like that. The second one, we're just going to not invert it and paint mode, let's just say subtract. So what that's going to do is mask our text like this. So we're just cutting out this text. And then that text is going through a displacement and then it's cutting out our background with that matte control. Then we're adding a little shadow behind it and another shadow after that, and then duplicating that back in Z space. It's not really in Z space actually, we're just merging it under it multiple times and changing the size. So it kind of looks like it goes back in the distance, but it doesn't really. This is just fancy 2D stuff. And yeah, now we have all these little things we can play with, make a really cool animation. Looks like it took you so long, but it didn't. The one thing I'll do is I don't like this motion to be so smooth because this is sort of a stop motion effect. So guess what? We can use an effect called stop motion. The other day I put out a tutorial that kind of did this effect and I didn't know that stop motion existed in <laughs> Fusion because there's like hundreds of nodes. So I kind of built my own with an expression on a different node and you guys were like, you cotton headed ninny muggins. Why don't you just say it? I'm a cotton headed ninny muggins. <laughs> 
you can just use this. I'm like, all right. And what this does is it throws away frames, basically. It duplicates frames so that it looks like this is uh, shot with a lower frame rate, just like you would have for something that's stop motion, right? It's probably like 12 frames a second or something like that. And so we can give it that kind of stuttery look, like we cut this out of paper, you know, and do all kinds of fancy things. Again, let's bring up our spline. I'll hit Control A to select all of our keyframes and hit F on the keyboard. And now we have this nice kind of more stop motion-y feeling thing. And you can just go crazy on this. And this is all being driven by this text that has these masks over it and everything else is happening after that. So we can switch this out with absolutely anything. I could do something like import an SVG. We'll just grab like a YouTube logo or something and I could plug this YouTube logo in and maybe, you know, transform it, scale it down a little bit. And now we have sort of a similar thing with this YouTube logo. So it's really a versatile way to make your graphics. So one of the reasons I love nodes, man, is you can just switch things out real quick and you could have this source trickle down to 500 other things if you want to. It's just really, really easy to swap things out. Super fun little effect, really cool way to make graphics. I love making this kind of stuff in Fusion. If you don't know me, my name's Casey and I teach people how to use Fusion to make awesome things like visual effects and motion graphics for uh, for DaVinci Resolve. So I have lots of videos if you're new to Fusion and I definitely recommend checking out that nine nodes that you need because that just simplifies a lot of stuff. I mean, there's hundreds of nodes to learn in Fusion and uh, you can really do so much just with a few nodes. So check that out right there. And uh, I also have more Fusion videos right here like this one, okay? So uh, yeah, check out the workshop, check out the video. And yeah, I'll see you around. See you around the, the pond. I don't know why there's a pond. <laughs>